such an asshole. Several of you sent this to me, though. It, we had hit the trillion dollar mark, I think, about a, a month ago. <clears throat> and I'm confused. I, I, and I have a question. I have a question for a certain group of people out there. So I'm going to read this. And then I'm just going to use my stupid logic and ask a question. And say, well, wouldn't it? The, I got the switch right here. Credit card and car loan defaults hit 10 year high as inflation squeezes families. Maybe you shouldn't have had family. Just, just me. Just me. Poor families. Last I checked, kids were pretty darn expensive. What are you having kids you can't afford? Just me. Crazy economist. That's not my main question. <clears throat> Inflation squeezed Americans. You all voted for it, right? We all liked it when Trump gave us the money and Obama printed off the money. We all were okay with that. Stimmy checks, right? Oh, my God. Things are expensive. Inflation squeezed Americans are defaulting on their credit cards and auto loans at levels not seen since the financial crisis. And the struggle to pay their bills is poised to get worse as interest rates rise and a moratorium on student loan expires. You were living at home and you got free money and you couldn't pay your student. <clears throat> Low middle income earners have been especially hit by hard soaring prices on everything from rent, groceries and new and used cars, despite the Federal Reserve's attempt to tamp down stubbornly high inflation. This year, credit card delinquencies have hit 3.8%, while 3.6% have defaulted on the car loans, according to agency Equifax. Both figures are the highest in more than 10 years. The increase in delinquencies and defaults is symptomatic of the tough decision that these households are having to make right now, like not having kids. Just before we continue on, I'm not being a hypocrite. I had a vasectomy long ago because I knew if I had a kid, I'd, I'd be over, financially be over. I had the respect to not say, yeah, I don't know, it feels good to come inside a girl. Why are we so poor? <clears throat> I've never missed a credit card payment. I've never missed a car payment. I've never had a car payment. I always paid cash for my cars, and they were junky cars. They were crap cars. And I've seen poor people with their cars. I, the average poor person in America has a better car than I'd always did. How it's a choice. It's no different than being fat. It's a goddamn choice. And this is not the Great Depression, which we're going to get to. <clears throat> Tough decisions that these households are having to make right now, whether to pay the credit card bills, the rent, or buy groceries, or maybe not go out. Maybe stop getting your chicken tendies. Maybe you start shopping at Aldi. I still shop at Aldi. I still shop at Goodwill. Why would you waste the money? Mark Zandi, chief economist at Moody's Analytics, told the Washington Post, with any savings from pandemic era government stimulus checks dried up, many stretch borrowers have turned to opening new lines of credit. I can't afford what I got now, so I'm going to go more into debt. More into debt. I got to ask what. These are adults. These are adults. You got cars. Some of you, I think, maybe have jobs. And your solution is to go further into debt. What are you buying? I've done the numbers. Now, maybe we have to update it for inflation, but I did the numbers a little while ago. You can get by in 17 grand a year in the United States. But here's where the butt people come. But I live in California. Well, then maybe you should move out of California. Is a national average. <laughs> Not if you live in a major metro. <laughs> maybe you should move out of one. <clears throat> It never dawned on me like there were two solutions if times were tight and they, they were for decades, literally two decades. I need to spend less. I need to make more. I never said I need to go and borrow more. Is everyone a Democrat? I'm just wondering. Although, to be perfectly honest, Republicans too. We've spent more. We went in more debt than we did in World War II as a percentage of GDP to fight the disease. Oh, and stimmy checks. 
I know how to fight a disease. Yeah, how's that? Give everybody a lot of government money. Oh, that'll solve the problem. I thought it would have been something medical or biological. We should just give people money. That has always solved the problems. With any savings from pandemic era, government stimulus checks dried up. What happened to the savings? What happened? You had a rent moratorium, a savings, uh, uh, <clears throat> what's it called? Uh, stimulus checks? You didn't save it up? Many stretched borrowers have turned to opening new lines of credit, even as the average interest rates hit a record 20.6%, according to bank rate, to try and pay off their debts. They're not. Oh, God. The journalist. You're not paying off your debts. You're rolling them over. That's all you're doing. There's 70 million more credit card accounts open now than before the pandemic in 2019, and credit card debt surpassed $1 trillion for the first time ever. This year, according to the New York Federal Reserve, we've sped way past normal. Mike Bryson, a senior economist at Moody's Analytics, said on a webcast who referred to the growing delinquencies as very concerning. According to the Washington Post report, the interest rates on credit cards could soar even higher as the Fed moles another interest rate hike at the end of the month to bring, in, bring inflation down to its target of 2% from its current 35 If you ignore rent and cars and tuition and healthcare, which when you add those all up is usually no nothing short of 75% of people's budget. But look, milk came down by a nickel. Oh, God almighty, Joey Biden's doing swell. <clears throat> look, paper dropped 13 cents. Hoo -hoo. That's a 2% headline inflation if I ever saw one. What do you mean, rent? <sighs> <clears throat> Vulnerable individuals already squeezed by high rents and grocery prices that they voted for. We'll also need to, I added that, also need to start making student loan payments next month after the debts were paused for more than three years. You had three years, man, and inflation ate away at that. You had three years, and the average balance is 36000 You can't get on a payment plan? <clears throat> you can't go babysit some kids like twice a week and like in three years' time pay that off? The pain felt by consumers could be a positive sign for Fed policymakers as they seek to thread the needle to avoid a recession with their much ballyhooed soft landing, according to financial experts. The Fed might look at this and say this is the whole purpose of raising rates to make it more difficult to make purchases. Torsten Slock, chief economist, of, a lot of chief economists. Like, do you have any rank and file economists? Just your, your tapioca run of the mill economists. Everyone's a chief economist. Chief economist at Apollo Global Management told the Washington Post. However, with the holiday season approaching, industry experts are also concerned that consumers will rack up even more debt on top of their rising energy bills, particularly as the cold weather kicks in and the cost of heating homes ratchets up. Any of you from do any anyone here from the 70s and 80s? What was the solution? Put on a sweater and do some push-ups. That was the that was the solution. I mean, you could. You could all have sex with your, your spouse and that'll heat you up. Oh, wait. <laughs> Ooh, grody. Sex with my spouse. Ew. Uh, retailers, including Macy Coles and Nordstrom's, have also called out the rising delinquency rates among their customers who have private label store cards. Macy's acknowledge. Oh, you guys issued credit, huh? You you gave them credit cards, did you? Now, hmm. Macy's acknowledged that its store card delinquency rates were rising faster than planned. The company's chief operating everything's a chief. Chief operating officer Adrian Mich Mitchell said in an earnings call in August. Other retailers like Foot Locker have blamed disappointing financial results on consumer softness. People don't like going into default or delinquency with credit cards. It makes a lot of people feel very nervous and unhappy. Really? Neil Saunders, managing director. Ba ba ba. It undermines this and that, that and this. Okay. I got to You got to answer it for me. Riddle me this. Riddle me that. Why? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get ahead. Uh, let me not get ahead of myself. I apologize. So. I said, all right, there's a lot of people with debt. And they got to start rolling over the credit cards now. 
Like, how are they going to make ends meet? In my day, in my day, <clears throat> and matter of fact, for all of human history, it was make more money or spend less. But now we're rolling over debt. So out of curiosity, you know, I used to be an economist at one time. Not a chief economist. <clears throat> Just a regular street economist. And I went to the interwebs and I looked up the unemployment rate. And the unemployment rate is 3.6%. I think it was in the sixes when I graduated from college. <clears throat> and whereas I am fully aware of how unethical, scummy, backstabby, and self-serving modern-day American employers are, but with an unemployment rate of 3.6% and restaurants, retail, all around, Everywhere I go in the United States, whether that's Vegas or South Dakota, don't matter. Closing early due to lack of staff. Can't find staff. Desperate for work. They're paying $15 an hour. Everyone's been clamoring for that. Predictably now, all the socialist little parasites, I need 25. Like, oh, shut up. We're not playing your game anymore. Why don't you go get a part-time job? Seriously. Why don't you? Why don't you go work another job and pay it off? And it ain't like you got an opportunity. It ain't like you all got lives anyway. You're sitting there at home shooting up your Ritalin or however you inject Ritalin. I don't know how you take Ritalin. Or Adderall. That's the one. Adderall. <clears throat> you don't have families. You don't have lives. You don't have kids. And those of you who have kids, you have too many of them. Why don't you get away? Have the spouse watch over while you work a job. And then when you're back, the other spouse works a job. This presumes you're married and you're capable. Why don't you just work a part-time job and pay down your debts? And I know the backlash is it, it's going to be the butt people. But boomers are bad, but, but we're not paying up. But it's not like, okay, I don't care. I don't care. In my day, you had to, you worked and made ends meet. I remember, I guess, cumulative working four different jobs at one time. Banking, teaching dance, the finance classes I was doing, and I was substitute teaching as well. <clears throat> I lived in basements, spent less bagel and ham sandwiches. There we go. Bagel ham sandwiches. Those were the, those were not the best. <laughs> I don't want to ever eat one of those again, but I got by. And I asked, why can't you do the same? You, you're so desperate that you're going to engage on a solution that is just going to make your situation worse, worse and not solve your problem. But in that immediate month that you took out credit card to pay off the other credit card, that everything's okay for that 30 days. <clears throat> and but I know it's not it's not as simple. It, it, here's the thing. I know not to ask this question because I'm not going to get an intellectually honest answer back from the people who are in debt. And the reason why is because they the reason they go into debt, the reason they engage in a solution that only it is not a solution, it just makes the problem worse is because they are more afraid of working than they are an entire life of financial financial destitution and ultimately poverty and stress living with lifetime debt that's that they're making that choice they are so afraid of work so afraid of it that instead of saying hey yeah you're right time to buckle down I'll get a part-time job working over at the restaurant. I'll get a part-time job, whatever, at the library, not the library, the gas station. <clears throat> I'll, I'll be a bartender. I'll work security, whatever. Instead of doing that for an extra five, six hours a week, ideally 20, that make quick work of your debt problems. They're like, oh, no, I can't. Oh. Work? What do you mean work? Work? work but i already work 40 hours a week said said the rookie canadian hell so then i gotta add because i know you don't want to solve your problem I'm like 
what's that like being so afraid of work? And I've seen it before. I, I, I wrote a finishing up chapter one of the new book. And I, and I had to sit and think of different people who suffer so much more. Like, there's work. Nobody likes work. You know, it, it, I don't like it going to work. You didn't like going. No one likes going to work. But there's things a lot worse than going to work. I give an example of being in a being homeless in it or in a tent city. Not in Florida, but in Minnesota, like where it's minus twelve in winter. They have it. They got they. There are people who'd rather risk death. Not to mention, by the way, I don't know if you've ever been cold, like really, you, you've you been threatened by the cold. I have <clears throat> for years. It sucked patrolling outside in the cold. Your body is constantly under assail and attack is like, if we don't get in, we're going to die. Your body doesn't know that, oh, no, there's a heated place. And at the end of the night, we're going to go sleep in this crappy dorm room and sleep on a couch <laughs> and eat bagel ham sandwiches. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> but it's a constant subconscious threat of death, but it's way more real if you're in a tent or panhandling or trying to find heat crates. That's one thing I never understood as a security guard in January. Like, why don't you go take a bus down to Florida or Texas? And the answer is because it's too much work and they're so afraid of work. They'd rather go through that hell of being cold <clears throat> than taking a shower, getting some clothes at Goodwill or the church, and shutting the F up and showing up on time and just doing whatever job that comes your way. <clears throat> Another one, those of you who are of the Democrat or Socialist Party voting variety could be labor. I'm not just talking to the U.S., but those of you who keep living in government finance squalor, whether that's Section 8 and it's dangerous, why don't you get off your asses, get a job, and then sl not s slowly but surely get the hell out of the bad neighborhoods and maybe go get your own place and not live with your single mom whore. And your five or six half step and step siblings. I don't know the no, half and step siblings. This presumes the stepdad is around. Whichever is it stepdad number three or stepdad number four? Consult your half brother from two fathers ago. That is a hell. That is a hell. We've had clients before where the mom would threaten to kick him out of the Section 8 housing because if the young man, a 17 year old man, old boy, I guess. I said, Cappy, I want to join the military. I want to go to college. But if I leave, my mom will kick me out. Leave. Like work 80 hours a week. Anything to get away from that horrific environment. Oh, no. That Now, these young men who are clients obviously want to work. They're not who I'm talking about. I'm sure. But I'd love to follow up with them. I should find out what happened to them. But some people are like, work? Which you don't even have to be in Section 8 housing or government finance squalor for that. I saw the data. Still now, okay, millennials, the average, uh, the oldest millennial is now 41 or 42, depending on what you want to consider it. One in five male millennials live at home. Now, I can understand Zoomers. Or if you're in grad school or saving up for house. So I got that. Well, I'm going to guess out of that 20%, not a lot of them are like, oh, yeah, I'm saving up money for a down payment. This is just temporary. You're living with your parents at 38 years of age and you're never going to find a girl. You're never going to get laid because you're that afraid of work. <clears throat> and I got to know what what's that? What is living in that fear like? Because most of you don't ain't got rich people. That's why you're going into debt. Like you don't got rich parents. So. Your choice is living what I imagine to be a painful, psychologically tortured, 
miserable, stressful life that frankly isn't worth living. That would not, that is not a life worth enduring. You are just suffering a life of suffering versus just taking the bullet and going and getting a job and getting your financial act together. What is so, what are you so afraid to work for? And I don't want to hear you pampered little socialists from the suburbs who mom and dad finally cut off at 32. I'm going to go work here. Just part of the system, man. Fine. But if it got to the point that you are so financially destitute, you are now rolling over credit cards. Wouldn't sheer practicality, like, uh, yeah, I get it. Work if every boss is going to suck. But go work for six months and be done with it. But somehow your logic is to not solve the problem because you're so afraid of work. And even though you could be done and over with this like six months, a year, two, three years, depending on how bad your financial situation is. But it there'd be an end. There'd be an end. And if you got your ass in there and got a job and worked your main job and then you worked another job, dare I suggest you work two full-time jobs. You see how quickly your finances improve over that. But after six months... The, the nightmare is over until you knock up another girl or you buy some stupid crap you don't need or get yourself a master's degree in the liberal art until you screw it up again. <clears throat> Why? Why can't you work? It's not that bad. Oh, I'm sure it's bad. I'm sure it's not fun working at McDonald's. It's not fun working the overnight shift. It's not fun patrolling in 20 below zero. But you got a job, and it's better than, like, <clears throat> there's Cappy in the, imagine skinny, emaciated Cappy, okay, 120-pound Cappy. He's out there. Who would you rather be? Cappy earning a $6.90 an hour, which admittedly we'd have to have inflation. He's earning $6.90 an hour. He's up at 3 a.m. It's 12 below zero. He's cold, all right? Would you rather be him or the bum he's kicking outside? Because the bum's sleeping on the high, the heat grate or trying to sleep in the bowels of the campus's buildings and all that. And then the nearest shelter, which may be full at that moment in time, is at least two two miles away. And you're too drunk or tired as a as a bum to make that. You don't even know where it is. Who would you rather be? Would you rather be Cappy making his six ninety an hour, who goes to an admittedly crappy apartment, <clears throat> sleeps in their shelter, or would you rather be the tent people, who got so delusional one year? The the, the city actually said we're going to build you housing because you're going to die in winter if you don't get in here, and they fought them. We're a community. We don't need you. Don't tell us what to do. Who would you rather be? Would you rather work McDonald's? Or would you rather be one of these idiot bums, which admittedly they probably do make some money homeless, 3.6% yeah. unemployment, stimmy checks up the ass, I can't be homeless, get you hungry for food. And I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear, oh, they're all on drugs and mental disorder. No, 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 that, that, that nope, gone, mm -mm. <clears throat> doesn't matter. My, my argument would still stand. Do you know how much drugs and booze you could buy if you had a job? <clears throat> There's always that it's not our fault. Well, how'd you get a credit card if you're on drugs? How you? And I, all I'd ask, uh, could you just try it my way once? Go in and work a whole week. Or maybe work to get a paycheck. I guess you gotta you gotta give it the honest go. You're gonna have to work at least two weeks to get a paycheck. And see if the paycheck. See, one, see if the work is as bad as your crippling fear of work is. And at the end of the two weeks, and after the taxes are taken out to help people that you voted for, <clears throat> then say, oh, am I better off? Did the debt go down? If I kept it, was it as bad as I thought it would be? I just got to know. I just got to know how dumb you Americans are. So there you go. And um, look, in in ye olden times, you didn't have no three percent, three point six percent unemployment rate. Usually, if if people were poor, it's because there was a recession. Unemployment was fifteen percent. 
It's never been like this. It's never been like this. There's oh, there's so much debt. They can't handle all they have. It's things are so tough. They can't afford that. The unemployment rate is 3.6. Go get another job. And then heaven forbid, if more people worked, all of a sudden the society and the economy would actually get better. Like, oh, you could go to Perkins and there might be some damn French silk pie. You could go to the grocery store and they might have a checkout clerk that can help you. <clears throat> anyway, if you want to get your financial shit together, link below is, of course, the offer through Teachable called Achieving Minimalism. I know I talked about earning more money, but I'm going to bet, I'm going to guess those people who are in financially tough times, I'm going to bet you've spent your money on some really stupid shit. And if you want to get out of your financial troubles, your financial crises, what you could do is not only work more, but you could spend less. But I get it. I get it. If I was your average American who had no love, no no friends, no real career, nothing in life, I, I guess I would look to materialism and a fancy car and fancy clothes and other material items. If I was a truly worthless person, I'd go double down on my dumb, worthless liberal arts degree and get a master's in it. So now I'm $200,000 in debt. Or if you're really stupid, you go to law school. Now you're $300,000 in debt. Here's just an idea. Here's just an idea. Why don't you stop spending the money and finding purpose and value and getting your financial stuff together so you don't have to keep borrowing and begging from either banks or people in the street. <clears throat> and between working more and spending less, how about we all solve our problems here in these United States? Huh? Whoa, 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 whoa. And maybe you make this. What was the article? Was it something like 20% of people who make $100,000 or more are like, uh, it wasn't their fine for bankruptcy, but they had no money. They had no savings because they spent it all. <laughs> That's what the course I offer deals with is it eliminates your spending. Well, it doesn't eliminate. You need to spend something on it, but it, it gets rid of the frivolous spending. <clears throat> so if you like to get your financial act together, look, it doesn't matter. Well, I'm going to set up a 401k and an IRA and, and a will. And it doesn't matter if you spend more money than you take in. You ain't going to have no money to invest. So the first step, the first step in you actually getting a life and not just, well, I'm going to buy something. I'm going to buy a dress. I'm going to buy things because I don't have a life. The first step is to make it so you spend less than you make so you have money so you might be able to go out and enjoy life. <clears throat> You might be able to join that roller skater club or whatever with their dues. You might have to work all the time or be poor, staying in, drinking booze, and like numb the pain of your miserable life. You might actually have your financial act together that you might actually be able to finance and afford things like going out. I don't mean like partying, but like actually, oh, I could go on a road trip and see Yellowstone. I could join this group that I want to, I want to, I don't know. Yeah, I want to play hockey. Okay, here's your fees. And it doesn't cripple the bank. You don't have to put it on a credit card. <clears throat> so that's linked below. It is with tax, with tax, because you all keep voting Democrat and you need that money. With tax, depending on what your sales tax is, it's around 500 bucks. It's 450 base price. It's 500 average on with the tax. Why is it so expensive? So you pay the F attention. And don't you tell me, oh, my God, $500. Oh, really? I'd like to see your credit card statement. I bet you pissed away more than 500 bucks on booze, nightclubs that you didn't get laid at. That's for you boys out there. Clothes, ladies, that's for you. Shoes, that's definitely for you girls. Handbags. And before you, before you poo-poo that, what's your car payment? Oh, that's what I thought. It's more than the one-time class. By the way, it closes on the 8th. It is not open. It is not a resource available to you all the time like daddy government. It is going to close for enrollment on the last second of the 8th. By the first second of the 9th, it will be closed for enrollment. 
Those of you who sign up for it, <clears throat> you have 45 days to complete the course. So it's not like you're like, oh my God, I got to take it and I got to take it because it's long. It's like six to seven hours long. If you spend the money, I've seen this is what's great. If you if you drop that money on it, I have a feeling I don't have, you're going to watch it. You're going to do what's in it. You're going to take it seriously. Beforehand, it was like, you know, I, I could see the, you get metrics um, and what was it? Uh, I had slightly higher numbers, but Mike Sartain or at Vegas Access was telling me that only 16% of people finish the courses they take. And mine was like in the 20s. I'm like, it really? And I'm like, no, you got you got to charge more and then people take it seriously. Well, there you go. That's in my best interest too. All right, let's go to the Super Chats. Look at that, nine Super Chats. Today's Super Chats. Hey, by the way, good news, guys, <clears throat> for the regulars tuning in. Uh, I have repaired all the things from the lightning strike. Still waiting on money from American Family Insurance. Thank God I spent less than I made and had an emergency savings fund so I could fix things like, you know, the electrical wiring and the garage door opener. Man, and let me tell you how many women were so turned on by my fiscal responsibility. <laughs> by the way, being fiscally responsible will not get you the girls. The girls could not care less about you being fiscal. <laughs> Just being in full intellectual honesty and disclosure. If you get good, like I've never had a girl say, oh my God, here's my number. You, you fully funded and contributed to your IRA this year already? Well, it's only April. Yeah, baby, that's not, that is not, uh, that's not got me laid once, not once yet. <clears throat> but you'll have good finances. I don't know if that's really what you do. Anyway, so um, <clears throat> now the money I am going to get, I think what I'm going to get is an average, not a ridiculously stupid, I'm going to get an average poker table so I can host poker games for my buddies to come over. <clears throat> and I looked into some poker tables. You guys want to see ridiculously expensive? Go look up Faro poker tables. They're so expensive, they don't even show you the price. I'm like, hmm, yeah, I'm not going to buy that one. But I found some. They're more pricey than you think, and what really gets you is the chairs because you, you can't just have these folding chairs. you got to have middle-aged man, comfortable rocking chairs. That's what you need. I guess I could use these. These aren't that expensive. Just go get some office chairs. Maybe I'll do that. Just go down to the office to pot. Yeah, why didn't I think of this is a nice chair? I spent 110, 120 bucks on this one. <clears throat> Working three years so far, good. Anyway, so today's proceeds, we actually get to spend something fun, guys. Remember, I was buying seed and fertilizer and chemical spray to get rid of the weeds. I was buying gravel. Remember all the gravel I bought with the super chat money? <clears throat> and and a liner. To make sure the weeds don't come up. Oh, some fun stuff we spend our super chat money on. I might get a poker table, guy. We might get a poker table. <clears throat> God damn. See, and I can afford. Oh, how come Cabby? He just said to be a minimalist. Like I was a minimal. Well, I still am a minimalist. That's the problem. I actually have a house that's like a real house now, not a one bedroom apartment split between me and the GF. We're just like we gotta get furniture, which I did buy. At Walmart, I furnished the whole house for like under three grand. It was brilliant, guys. It was brilliant. But this one, a poker table, I'm going to afford myself the one nice thing. <clears throat> and when you are a minimalist and you don't piss away your money, I don't. My youngest car is 17 years old. 17, that, that I have here in South Dakota. 17-year-old car. That's my youngest car. All the other cars are older than that. My truck. <clears throat> it's rusty. I didn't spend the money. And now I could pay cash for things when I have the money. How do I get to that situation? Well, stop spending more than you make and pay cash for things. There's some free advice for you there. Free advice on that. I'll give that one away for free because it's math. Drew, two bucks. The night shift is the cheat code to success. Thank you, Drew. It is. Because now, Drew, were you, were you security as well? 
The trick is once you get past the patrol shifts and they start putting you on indoor shifts and then, especially with the laptops, which we didn't have in my day, dude, you can go to college and bang out. You could go to college, Western Governors University, while working security at night. You could probably bang out a degree in three years at Western Governors University. Drew, two bucks. Do you think student loans will cause the crash? No, because they're not that high. <clears throat> There's what, 1.6 trillion, maybe even less by now. Um, and it's only like, I think the average balance is $36,000. That That's less than the average car right now, Drew. People's car payments are more than the student loan bailouts. Well, I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, you need a student loan bailout, but you can afford a $500 a month car payment? Get the F out of here. The People are not that financially destitute. They're just that lazy. And they're just that cowardly and cripplingly afraid of work. That's it. That's all it is. And I'm not even joking or trying to be like somebody's scornful father. I don't understand. Why don't you just go work another job? It can't possibly be better worrying about the money all the time and treating your miserable life and, and with coping or plying it with booze and drugs and food. Like, don't you want it to end? <clears throat> oh, but I'd have to get up and stay up. Like, yes, you would. Yes, you would. Like, that's going to be their whole lives, man. People live their entire lives in Section 8, EBT, taking the bus. Nothing wrong with taking the bus. I still take the bus in Vegas if I can't get a friend to pick me up. <clears throat> but, like, if that's your entire life, wow. All because you're afraid of a $12 an hour job. Jason uh, DG, five bucks. I'm creating an LLC, Red Batch of Pad Economics. Is there any drawbacks to creating an LLC in tax haven states? Probably in fact, <clears throat> no, there's no drawbacks and there's no advantage either. The, the reason why is that if you set up an LLC, it's a pass-through entity, which means it, your LLC doesn't pay the taxes. You do. The money is just passed on from the LLC to you. And so whatever state you're living in, you pay the um, the regular income taxes that you would uh, as an individual. And so uh, there's nothing I now there's other benefits like filing costs. Uh, if you plan on moving to Nevada, you don't you know, you could file your LLC in Nevada. The problem is that let's say you live in Oklahoma and file in Nevada. <clears throat> you would have to register with the Oklahoma uh Secretary of State as a foreign entity. It's not hard. It's just, it's an annoying um, hurdle. I don't even know why they had, I don't know why well, you got to register here as a foreign entity. Why? So you can make you 50 bucks? What? So just, just so you know. Uh, but if you move to Nevada, you're there. And there's no state income taxes in Nevada. Same thing with Wyoming or Tennessee or Alaska, New Hampshire, Florida, and Washington State. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, for now, just set it up in your state if you plan on living there for a while and make it easier. Unless you're like in California. If you're in California, I wouldn't set it up there or New York, but any other state probably. Rakesh Patel, five bucks. Discipline and delay gratification are freaking superpowers in this day and age. You nailed it, buddy. It, it it's it's almost like they can't think to the next day. Like it's that Tom Cruise movie, Tomorrow Never Comes, or The Day After Tomorrow, where it's just repeat, repeat, repeat. They they don't think about the next day. Literally, the next day. And I don't believe this. Oh, I mean, I yeah, I believe it to a certain extent. If you got an IQ of 67 or officially mentally impaired, you don't understand delayed gratification. But the normal average person, BS. They can figure out how to play video games. They can figure out how to get every sort of government aid. They can get a college degree. like, But they can't do delayed gratification. Bullshit. They just need to starve. They just need to suffer. And then they won't do it again. But you are right. You You are right. Zeke Meister, hey, Zeke, you've been around a, while, a lot today. Get a CDL, live at home until 21. The, yeah, you're not even living at home. You're in the truck, so you're not bothering your parents that much. Been living a truck doing over the road for a few years. Buy a cheap house in Indy with a high down payment set for life on cruise control. You got it. You got it. You and Alex Patino, you and the tornado chasing kid, you all got it. And you're all going to do better than me by the time you're my age. 
because I was stupid and went to college. Shit else, DR, two bucks. We need to talk about health care insurance costs. I uh, found a pretty good deal for being a single bachelor, <clears throat> especially at my age. Um, but then again, I, yeah, health care, especially if you got kids. But you all voted for Obamacare and, and insurance got cheaper, right? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it how you all don't understand. Not, not you guys. I mean, the, the normies out there. We just make it free. Why are they things so much more expensive? But you guys, I really, you all have to take economics in high school, right? You have to take it in college. Why, why doesn't anyone get it? Why is it that hard? Or do you just have really bad teachers? Oh, I forgot the teachers. Donna Hannaford, uh, two bucks. Like the stream, everyone. Thanks, Donna. I it was, uh, is uh, pop done broadcasting. I know, I know who's your first and true love. And I'm, I am merely your paramour on the side. But I saw he was uh, streaming today. Drew, two bucks. The military is also a great cheat code for life. Yep. Yes, it is. Shark Toss, 50 generous dollars. Thank you, Shark. You didn't have to. Uh, this will go to help uh, buy the pool table. I'll send you all a picture of the pool table. I can take a picture of the pool table. I'm sorry, not pool table, poker table. I apologize. No, not a billiards table. I, that's too expensive. A poker table, a poker table. I think I should be able to find a good one for like 800 and very nice felt. Uh, hey, Cappy, just checking in. How you been? Hope all is well. I'm doing better because the internet is working. Been able to do regular work. All the repairs are done, so I'm finally back to normal now. I got to enjoy one day of summer, August 31st. <laughs> mowed mowed the, the yard today. Just, I'm just happy things are back to like normal. Uh, we'll be in contact for a video request. Take care. Thank you, Shark Toss. Yeah, let me know. We're always here at Asshole Consulting. Hand clogs, our friend down south. Happy Cappy. Obey our robot dog overlords. Of course we will. <clears throat> Drew, two bucks. Yep. Worked in corrections. Finished my master's. There you, there you go. There you go. It, Drew, two bucks. Lots of broke people living, driving Teslas, I've noticed. Oh, yeah. So my buddy, Khan. All right, he he was living in the hoity-toity parts of Phoenix, right? And he worked at a gas station to make ends meet. And he's a Democrat, if you guys could sit down and believe that. A Democrat took responsibility. Of course, he's an older Democrat, <clears throat> not one of the modern days. I exist. Everyone give me money and suck my dick. Give me a job. I have a degree. Pay for my degree. I don't want to work. Why am I poor? It's Trump. Um, and he was telling me about how many people in the rich part of Phoenix would come in with like Escalades and fancy SUVs and then like use EBT cards to pay for food. It There's there is so few genuinely poor people, so few in this country. It It, it is. Oh, don't you get me started what President Cappy would do. I'd, I'd say I need full funding for the IRS, but we're we're setting up a whole new division. <clears throat> it's called the Welfare Fraud Division, and we're investigating everyone. And I would save so much money. I'm like, nice SUV you got there. You don't get EBT cards. Nice McMansion you got over there. You don't get a WIC. <clears throat> Drew, shit, I'm sorry. Um, but yes, Drew, that is correct. I the I I have very good finances. I'm not wealthy, but I have no debt or no debts. I got a little bit of a mortgage. I will admit that. But all these people who are in worse financial shape than me, some who are insolvent, meaning they have a negative net value, everyone's got nicer cars than me, man. They all got nicer clothes. Shit house DR, two bucks. How do you find a good deal on said insurance? Um, <clears throat> I go through golden rule, but it's state dependent. And what I do is a six-month contract. So I every six months I renew. And I got to call my insurance agent and say, okay, set this up again. And so it's like uh, a catastrophic. And I pay $279 or $297 a month 
for me. Did some shopping. Did some shopping. Saved some money. All right. There you go. Uh, so link below. Uh, Achieving minimalism, theory and practice. Also, I have other resources on finance. If you want, like, well, how do I set up an IRA and all that? And how do I set up a budget? Go get my book, Bachelor Pad Economics. That's not 500 bucks. I think it's 24, 25 bucks, maybe. That's paperback. Uh, and then there's a introductory sister companion course that's cheaper, but not as thorough. Uh, called Achieving Financial Excellence. That's always open for enrollment. Um, but that doesn't do the deep psychological dive on how to break your addiction to spending. And that's what, if there was a sales point, like, well, what, what's the big deal about the minimalism course? <clears throat> the truth is you're addicted to spending. Everyone is because we consume calories of energy to survive. And that carries over into your finances. And I would also say today in the United States, since we we absolutely are not forming families. I'm not going to say which sex kind of hates the other and there's, there's like really nothing else to do. So no one has lives and everyone stays at home and gets fat and eats the chicken tendies and plays the video games. There's no real reason to live. So people fill that void in their, uh, in their soul and their lives with consuming. And just honestly, it destroys your life. It just, it, it makes it where you, you might as well not be living. You might as well not because it's just, what do you do? You wake up, oh, I got, I got Sonic. And Sonic's good eating. Don't get me wrong. I like me some Sonic. But if that was the peak of my day, and it was, I, I see this guy occasionally over at the gas station in Hermosa. It's like this restaurant gas station. <clears throat> I've seen him twice. The guy hangs out beneath his shirt. He goes in there, gets the big old Mountain Dew and comes out with a bunch of the crap food they make over there. And he goes back to wherever his trailer, I don't know exact. I didn't see which way he went. Only four directions out of town. <clears throat> I'm like, that's his day. That's his life. That's his freaking life. I don't care if he's on welfare or not. That It's over. He could have life on easy mode. He's not playing at all, period. All right, that's it. Links below. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.